Greetings, my name is Bill Dyke. I'm the product manager for Universal Discovery and seem to be. I'm going to be giving you a brief overview of the capabilities of Universal Discovery in helping to understand and make visible to you what you have in the cloud, and also to reduce risks that come with using cloud um, via the capabilities associated with Universal Discovery and seem to be. We'll be talking today about three different use cases. One is about visibility to the cloud. Second one is policies and compliance related to security. And then lastly, the ability to audit your software that you have available and installed on cloud systems. So the first one, cloud visibility. Let's go take a look at UCMDB as it relates to this topic. What you're seeing here is a view to all of the content that is currently stored in this particular instance of CMDB. All of this data has actually been captured through discovery and then populated inside of UCMDB. If you're a customer that is not currently doing cloud discovery, you're probably most familiar with VMware infrastructure discovery. Maybe you've done some discovery of databases. You might have some services. You may be actually doing some container or microservices discovery for Kubernetes. These are all capabilities that you would have for discovering your content on-premise. But when you start going into the cloud and moving your servers and services into the cloud, it's important to extend your discovery onto those same cloud environments as well. And what you see here is the result of that discovery from Universal Discovery of AWS from Amazon, GCP from Google, and Azure from Microsoft. In addition, we also represent information that's useful in a data center transformation from on-premise into cloud. We have two widgets that display the migration status of your on-premise databases into the cloud. You can see the on-premise count as well as the various cloud databases. Same thing for servers. We have a widget that shows your migration of on-premise servers into the cloud. You can see again the total number that are still on-premise as well as the number that have been moved to cloud. If we were to drill into one of these, you'll see a subset of all of the discovery that has come from AWS. And the scope of what you can discover is far beyond what I'm actually showing you here. I'm showing you something that just is, makes it really easy to be able to get an understanding. So what you see here are the locations that uh, show where these particular services are stored in Amazon. You can see the accounts that are here. Um, you can also discover at the organization level and all the accounts associated with that. You can see the various servers that are provided as EC2 instances and the VPCs in which they exist, as well as um, databases of any kind and attributes that might exist for these particular services, such as the IP address or storage or the IP service endpoint and so on. All of this content is available to discover into your existing CMDB that you've been using for on-premise discovery. You can see here that I am discovering AWS, Azure, and Google content in the same instance where I've been discovering my local content as well. Okay, let's move on to the next use case, and that's describing security policies and compliance. A policy is simply an action that you want to take to be able to identify a state that you want your infrastructure to exist within. And compliance will show you the actual state of that infrastructure compared to the policies. Let's take a look at what we mean. I'm going to drill back into the AWS topology and we'll take a look at some of the policies that come with Universal Discovery and seem to be out of the box. There are quite a few of them, many of them directly related to security situations. In this case, we're going to run a policy that says every EC2 server must be in a VPC, which is valuable to ensure that all of your servers are protected in the network access that they've been granted. So we're going to select this particular policy and apply it. And we'll see very quickly that two instances of EC2s are, are compliant, one is non-compliant. So we can go take a look at the text view and see the specific instance that is not compliant because it's missing a link to the Amazon Virtual Private Cloud. So if we go back to the actual map, we can clear this policy and see the map again. We can take a look to see what is being described here. So you see one Unix server connected to a VPC, you see another Unix server connected to VPC, and here is the instance that is not. Now, I'm only showing a little bit of data, so it would have been visually possible to observe this, but typically discovery of your cloud environment contains just an enormous amount of data, and finding situations like this becomes looking for a needle in a haystack. The policies that we provide allow you to find those needles inside of any size of haystack you may have. Let's take a look at another example. In this particular case, we're going to look at 
whether our storage is encrypted. And this is a capability that you can set inside of your AWS console. You, you can have your Elastic block storage encrypted. If I apply this, again, we see very quickly that there is one instance that's compliant and two instances that is not compliant. So based on this, it's possible to then hand this information over to your AWS system administrators and ask them to go make sure that the EBS storage in this these particular instances is encrypted. It's a setting that they would have to go change. And again, even though there's only a few instances on this example, you should expect that there be hundreds and hundreds of these EBS storage instances and we found the two out of those hundred that are not encrypted and we're able to communicate that to our administrators. The last use case we'll review is software auditability. This is something that you've actually been doing on premise by collecting the software that's installed on your servers and virtual servers. And as you move to the cloud, it's just as important to do it on those virtual servers as you've been doing it on premise. Let's take a look at what this is. In this case, we'll be moving to the software inventory page. The inventory page provides a collection of cards that report on a particular topic. There's topics all over the place, but we're going to be looking at two topics in particular having to do with installed software. And that's because there's two different ways to look at installed software. You can collect the list of installed software and then see what nodes they're installed upon, or you can look at it from the other perspective, which is to look at the nodes and determine what software is installed in those nodes. Either way, it's the same data, but it's all collected using Universal's classic discovery tools that will work for you in the cloud, just like they've been working for you on premise. Taking a look at this first report, it's gonna show information about all the software that's installed in your system as well as some information about it. So you can find a particular piece of software and then take a look at what server that software is installed upon. In this case, you can see that it's a, a virtual server on AWS. Another way to look at this information is to look at it from the node perspective, where you see all of the nodes, which are essentially servers that have been discovered by Universal Discovery, both on-premise and in the cloud. And then you can take a look at the software that's installed in that particular node. In this particular case, you can see all the list of software, its version, the vendor from which it came, as well as the end of life date. In all of these reports, you're able to download or filter to get the report just the way you look at. One additional point I wanna make is the importance of the end of life date and being able to correlate that with the software that you have and the version that's there. Knowing the end of life date will help you understand when the software needs to be updated and at what time will software patches end from the vendor that is creating the software. This is important to maintain security in your environment so you don't have a, a version of your software installed that is no longer being patched and is now vulnerable to security issues. Okay, that's the end of our demo about improving cloud visibility and reducing cloud risks with Universal Discovery. If you would like more information, please contact us through the link on the screen and we'd be happy to spend more time with you and go into depth with any questions you may have. Thank you. Mm -hmm.